let's finish this episode with an interesting but also a little bit complicated study and it's the study by Di Muro and Murray published in the famous journal of consumer research in 2012. The title of the study is an arousal regulation explanation of mood effects on consumer choice. The idea behind this study is that we choose products not only on rational grounds but also based on the mood we are in. And the authors argue that when we are in a good and relaxed mood, we tend to choose products that fit this positive and relaxed condition. Because there's no reason to change our actual mood. So if you are relaxed and in a positive mood, what would you choose? Either an iced tea or an energy drink? Well, they say you would probably choose the iced tea because it won't change your mood, which is at the moment really good. On the other hand, if you are in a euphoric state, which is still of positive balance, but also of a high arousal level, what would you choose then? Would you choose the iced tea, which might have a calming effect on you? Or would you choose the energy drink, which will keep you in this high arousal level? Again, probably, and this is also what they found in the study, you would choose the drink that fits your current mood and arousal level. So it would be the energy drink. But maybe there's a different picture if you are in a bad mood and you have a really low arousal level. So maybe you just woke up in the morning and you're feeling really depressed. Would you again choose the drink that fits your current state Maybe not, because you try to change your state. So we choose products also in order to change a bad state. Now you might say, yeah, okay, but I don't see the connection to music. Well, the connection is music can be used to create these different kinds of states. And in their study, they chose a, a piece from Mozart which was either played very fast or very slow, which is a manipulation in terms of arousal. This is something we already heard in the previous studies. But they also changed the key of this song. So for one half of the all in all 152 students, the music was played at an uplifting key, which was D major. And for the other half, it was played in D minor. And from experience, you know, D minor can have a more depressing mood. So for 10 minutes, the participants were listening to these different kinds of music. Some listened to uplifting and fast music. Some listened to uplifting and slow music. Another group listened to depressing and fast music and a fourth group listened to depressing and slow music and they also had a control condition in which participants listened to no music at all. After listening to music or no music participants were asked a few questions. Some of these questions were completely irrelevant. They were just there to distract from the real important question, which was, what would you rather drink, um, an energy drink or an iced tea? And participants were also told, well, as compensation for participating in the experiment, later on you will get exactly the drink that you decided for. So in fact, it was not a hypothetical, it was a real choice. And it turned out that the different modalities of the music indeed had an influence on the choice of drink. When participants were in a good mood with high arousal, they chose the drink that fitted their state. They chose the energy drink. When they were in good mood and relaxed, they more often chose the iced tea. But when they were in a bad mood, they decided for the drink that they thought could change their bad mood. So when they were in a bad mood and with low energy, they decided more often for the energy drink. But when they were 
in a bad mood with a high arousal level, they more often decided for the iced tea. And what is particularly interesting on this study is that they found almost exactly the same results when they conducted this experiment with different scents. So they had lavender as relaxing scent and they had grapefruit as a rousing scent. And the results were almost exactly the same. But they also conducted a third study, which is also noteworthy, because in this study, right after listening to the music, the participants were told, beware, the music might have influenced your mood. So if you answer the following questions, be careful, don't let yourself be influenced by this mood induction. And under these conditions, there was no effect. So if you know what's going on, if you are aware of the effects of music, it seems like that you are not influenced by it. So maybe it helps to listen to psychology podcasts telling you about these often unconscious effects. Mm -hmm.